Hi everyone, welcome to my presentation of the Vector Search Engine Reviate. I'm Laura Ham. I am a Community Solution Engineer at Semi Technologies, and I feel honored to speak today at the Open Source Summit. I'm a big fan, uh, first of all, of open source projects and communities, so I'm glad to share this with you. Um, the, yeah, our project with, with you that we are working on. And of course, I would have liked to present uh, this yeah, project uh, in a physical event in Seattle, but I'm happy at least that we have the opportunity to do this remotely. Um, I'm looking forward to meeting you all uh, remotely and to hear about your projects as well and what you think about uh, WeV8. You can reach out to me in the online environment of this event, uh, but also you can find me on LinkedIn, uh, you can send me an email or um, you can also join our uh, Slack channel, the WeVA Slack channel, by scanning this uh, QR code. So in this presentation, I will uh, introduce you to our open source factor search engine, Weaviate, and I will structure this as follows. So first, I will introduce you to unstructured data and the problems uh, and opportunities that it uh, comes with. Then uh, secondly, I will tell you how these problems can be solved with a vector database. And a vector database is a relatively new concept, so I will explain to you in detail what this means. Then, yeah, since Weaviate is, of course, a vector database, I will tell you uh, what Weaviate is and its features, and I will show um, some live demos to, to show the features. Um, then I will uh, talk about uh, the machine learning models that Weaviate can use. Weaviate can use uh, namely any machine learning model, and you can also use Weaviate to scale your own machine learning models. Uh, after that, I will yeah, go a little bit uh, in depth about the open source aspect of our project and how you can get involved. And finally, I will uh, briefly also say uh, how you can get started uh, with Weaviate and how you can get involved in a community. Okay, so yeah, first let's look at uh, data and particularly about unstructured data. So unstructured data are forms of data that are not predefined in a predefined, yeah, organized in a predefined manner. So take, for example, big pieces of text that can be documents like scientific papers or news articles, or for example, product descriptions, uh, reviews on your website, uh, and so on. We learned that actually 93% of data is unstructured and that 80% of businesses don't even know how to leverage um, uh, unstructured data. So what's actually so difficult about unstructured data then? So we know uh, that one thing is uh, searching through unstructured data is extremely difficult. Um, you can usually only find, um, for example, uh, text if you uh, search with a um, yeah, specific keyword and it matches this keyword or you have to define tags and so on. And um, we found a source that says that 80% of uh, the time that data analysts uh, work, they spend on preparing data to answer business questions. So that, so that means that they are yeah, organizing unstructured data or um, tagging these uh, 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 yeah, unstructured texts, for example. So for us, that's a, that's, that's a shockingly high number. And um, that yeah that data analysts need to spend before they can actually start answering uh, questions with the data so let me give you an example of uh, a simple example of searching through unstructured data if you want information from unstructured text you will need to use exact matching keywords as i mentioned before to find a result so for example here we have now um, a data set with different kind of wines for example, if this wine has a name and has a description, and in this description, it is mentioned that it is good with fish. Now, if you have a traditional search engine and you want to find a wine that fits with your uh, seafood dinner, for example, then this wine would not appear in the results because, um, yeah, the seafood is another word than fish. So there are no exact matches. 
So the result is that maybe no products are found. Now, if you have a vector search engine, on the other hand, um, which has a model behind it that is trained on uh, yeah, language and build a context around language, um, perhaps you can find this wine um, because it knows that seafood is, uh, is close to fish, actually. Um, compare this with Google search. So uh, if you ask Google a very abstract question, uh, it might find an answer. So the question here in the example is, what color of wine is Chardonnay? Um, is, is a bit abstract. And still, Google extracts the exact answer um, from like millions uh, or billions of results, actually. So yeah, it, it finds an ex uh, exact node in its, yeah, in this case, uh, yeah, huge knowledge graph, uh, which has the answer. So now the question is, how did Google actually find this answer? And um, also, how does it find it so fast? And then, yeah, the question also that uh, comes to mind is, how can we do this on our own data? Because Google is really good at this in uh, open data, of course, but um, you cannot use Google's algorithm on your um, yeah, private data. So the main question is, so what if, what if you could do the same thing uh, with your data in a simple and secure way? Um, we, yeah, the answer that we came up is uh, Weaviate. So Weaviate is a database that uses uh, machine learning to um, make context around data and uh, yeah, find answers based on the semantics or contexts. So Weaviate is a cloud-native, uh, modular, and real-time factor search engine that is built to scale your machine learning models. So now let's go um, yeah, a bit deeper in, in Weaviate and actually more in uh, what is vector search and vector storage. So Weaviate stores uh, data as vectors. And these vectors are placed in a space in relation to other data objects. Uh, machine learning models can be used to vectorize uh, data objects. So it computes a vector for each individual data object and places this in context. And this is the actual database. So really, Weaviate tries to understand uh, your, your data rather than just save it. So in more detail, this is how Weaviate works with a text factorization model. Um, a pre-trained pre model, um, in this case, it's a uh, BERT natural language processing module, which you can find on, for example, uh, the Hugging Face um, uh, website. Um, a BERT transformer model. And that can be used to compute vectors from uh, texts. So um, you can build an index of, for example, all the texts uh, or all the English language, which you see on the right here. And what you can do next then is to add your data objects, uh, which also contain text in this case. We can see later that it also works with uh, images and also other types of media. But in this example, we have text. So Weavit also uses this BERT model to um, places yeah, your data object, which contains text, in, uh, into context. So for example, if we add this Chardonnay we had before, we, uh, yeah, or the model knows that it's closely related to wine and white wine and uh, yeah, the fish or the food that it fits with. So then if you have a database in Weaviate with all your uh, data indexed as factors, and you can perform search queries. You can perform search queries in natural language, which will also be vectorized uh, and then um, uh, yeah, placed into context. And after that, um, Weaviate will perform a uh, nearest neighbor search and return the, yeah, the vectors, thus the objects that are closest to your search query. So in short, Weaviate has a pre-trained machine learning model attached which can be anything. Uh, you can uh, add your own data, and which then um, will be processed by the machine learning model and placed into context. 
And then if you perform a search query, for example, if you want to find a wine that fits with your seafood, you can uh, yeah, perform this in natural language. And we will return a list of uh, results uh, ordered by the nearest neighbor. So now that you know the basics of uh, how vectorization works in Wave 8, let's go over some features. Um, so we already know that Wave 8 is a vector database and a search engine with, uh, yeah, which has full CRUD support um, because it uses uh, REST APIs, but also um, a GraphQL API to make the queries. Uh, yeah, so data is stored as, vec as vectors. Uh, which are long arrays of numbers um, or also yeah known as the coordinates in a high dimensional space which allows for context-based search and also automatic classification so let's go to a demo um, first just to show how this yeah what i just showed in the example to see this in real life so if we go to our website uh, and the documentation we have um, a RESTful and API references and uh, yeah, and the GraphQL references. So yeah, we have plenty of examples of how uh, GraphQL uh, language works with VV8. So, and we have a running demo data set always. Um, for example, we have, uh, yeah, for the website, we have a demo data set of news articles. There are a few thousand uh, news articles of the yeah the past few um, uh, months in there, and you can uh, yeah demo some queries with that. So over here is our interactive environment, uh, which runs on the demo data set, and you can write um, GraphQL queries in there. So if we start now with uh, a GET query, and we want want to see what kind of news articles we have in there. And here I'm asking for three different properties of this article that I want to see. So now here on the right, we have a list of results. And let's just check the first one. Uh, it is an article with a title, a URL, and uh, the number of words. Um, you can also see that there's the yeah the actual text in there so it is a bit bigger um, data value and this contains yeah this is the bit of unstructured text basically so let's just query the title for now um and next to the yeah so this is uh, just a very basic query but we can show we can see that um there's actual actually a vector stored per data object. And here you see a list with like one vector. So this is the like, few hundred big coordinates of, of this data object. Okay, so this is a very basic query and it doesn't really show like the, yeah, the vector database, um, uh, functionalities or the, yeah, the context-based search. So we can uh, add a filter to find some articles with uh, or by natural language. So let's do that. We call this filter a near text filter because we want to find articles that are near a certain text. And here I can type in my natural language. So let's find uh, um, articles that are close to housing prices. And I get back a re uh, list with the results ordered by, um, yeah, how applicable they are to the um, search query. For example, the first one is a history, how housing prices became the world's biggest class asset class. And then housing prices became, are going ballistic. Um, Low mor mortgage rates don't help if houses are too expensive. And you can see that, for example, this third uh, result doesn't match exactly the search query, but still, you know, expensive uh, relates to money and prices and houses is almost the same as housing. So 
You don't have to search by exact matching keywords, but it works based on semantics. And we can ask, um, how certain uh, uh, the machine learning model was that this uh, result actually is a yeah, article that fits with this uh, search. So we can ask for the certainty. And we can see here that this first article or the machine learning model is 87% sure or certain that this uh, article matches uh, your search query. And you can also filter by this. So you can say, okay, I want a minimal certainty of 80, let's say 85%. And then you get only the results that are higher than this percentage. Um, yeah, you can make uh, longer queries as well. So it's, yeah, pure natural language. So if you want to be, go maybe a little bit more specific and maybe let's or make the certainty a bit lower. Then we can go to uh, prices of houses in Greece, for example. We see, oh yeah, we have only one result here that matches the certainty. And we have a result that says, um, Athens housing market revival driven by foreign buyers. You can see here that we create kind of knows that Athens is in, in Greece. Otherwise, this result wouldn't be the first one to return. Um, so yeah, this is uh, how the vector search works within we v uh, The second feature, um, and that's a quite unique one if we look at the landscape of vector uh, databases around, is that we VV8 combines uh, vector search and scalar search. So what I just showed you was uh, purely a vector search. Um, but yeah, scalar search, that's more traditional way of searching, like uh, where queries in SQL can be combined with this vector search. And I can quickly show this to you as well if we go back to the demo. So let's uh, say, see if we have a little bit more results so we can play around a bit. And then I can add another filter. For example, let's say we want the word count of an article um, be higher than a certain number. We can add a where filter uh, with, we are checking the word count. Oops, uh, we want this greater than, um, let's say 1000. So now I have this vector search or the context-based search and a where filter, which is a scalar search, and that is combined. So we see again, a very fast answer. Now, the first result that we had before is removed because it had a word count low lower than 1000. And now, um, yeah, we see a result matching the search query that we just entered. If we make it less, then we will see the previous result again. All right. So that was the demo. <laughs> then uh, the third one, a third feature is um, that you can also make graph connections between objects. So VV8 is not a graph database or pure graph database, but we can still make cross uh, references between data objects. And I want to show you this as well. So if we build upon uh, this search query, um, maybe we remove some things now we can see, uh, for example, in which publication each article is published. Now I'm adding um, this property, and this property is actually a reference to this other uh, data class with objects, namely publication. So we're asking for articles that are published in a certain publication. Now we can see that 
This article is published in Financial Times, the second one in CNN, etc. And we can also make uh, filters uh, with that. So if we change, for example, our where filter to publication, and I want the name, uh, for example, equal to, let's say, the economists. Um, okay, uh, I make a mistake here. That's because I need string to match it. And now I see results that are only appearing in The Economist. So this is how, yeah, graph relations are used in WeFit. So let's move on. So we have, um, uh, fourth feature that we've is very fast. So with the RESTful and GraphQL interface, you can make very fast queries. We are currently working on horizontal scalability, which will be released really soon, actually. So uh, you can yeah use Weaviate on a very very big scale with um, yeah the, yeah millions of objects. And then um, uh, Weaviate has a modular architecture. So this means you can use or choose any uh, machine learning model uh, to, yeah, for example, vectorize your data. So that's what I showed before. Um, data objects are stored as vectors. And to, to make vectors out of a data object or out of text or an image, you can use a machine learning model. For example, models that are trained with fast text or models that you can find on Hugging Face, like transformer models like BERT, or spacey uh, models, or ResNet for an image factorization model, et cetera. You can also extend VV8 with uh, extra capabilities with other machine learning models. Examples here are a Q&A model, or a spell checking model, or a named entity recognition model, et cetera. Um, so, all the modules that I just mentioned come out of the box, but you can also uh, choose your own or add your own model to this to use VGA to yeah, scale them uh, maybe. And it's super nice that it's fully uh, customizable, the setup. So you can mix and choose your own models. So you can choose to have a um, yeah, VGA running on a bird model and using a named entity recognition model and a QA module. For example, um, you can combine it all. And it doesn't require a lot of effort. It's just a few clicks in the configuration, or you can make a Docker Compose file uh, to, to run this. So in this um, fourth demo, I want to show you um, uh, these modules. So until now, we have only seen a vectorization model module um, that has this near text feature. But now uh, let's check another module. Until now, we had only seen the factorization model for texts. But um, I want to show you the named entity recognition model, module. Um, a named entity recognition module. Okay, so yeah, I want to show you in another demo uh, the different modules. So first one, the question answering module. So in the documentation, you see also uh, how you can use this. So let's go there. Um, we have, you know, this is how you uh, use the question answering module in GraphQL. And we can use this again in the demo. So uh, we have here, again, the articles data set, of course, and you can, and use a new search query. 
uh, search filter, sorry, uh, which is called ask. And here we ask the question, who is the king of the Netherlands? You can also specify in which property uh, the model needs to look. So if I then press enter, um, all the results will be, will be visible on the right again uh, in, in this property, additional property answer. So now we see that the machine learning model, the Q&A module, um, found an answer in this article. And the answer or the result is King Willem Alexander. And if we check in summary, so now I'm asking the whole summary to show, we can see that it found an answer in, in this piece of text uh, over here, actually. So it's really the machine learning model that finds a specific answer in a bigger piece of text. And that's really nice uh, to connect to EV8. Now I also want to show the named entity recognition model. We can make a new query uh, to show this. So let's say the contents. And we can ask the named entity recognition model module in an additional filter, named tokens. And I make a filter here, which says uh, in which property to find, uh, yeah, or to classify tokens. And I want this in content. So I do properties and I set this to content. And let's do only one for now. And um, yeah, let's uh, see the entity, the words that it was originally. And uh, we also have start position and end position. So if I run this query, we see that, let's first check the post. So it's a post, it's a piece of, uh, yeah, unstructured text. And here it finds a lot of, um, uh, yeah, named entities. And for example, the word Scott is recognized as an organization um, and so on. And this is all done by a hugging face transformer model as well. So let's dive a bit deeper into Weave8's module system. Weave8 has a modular architecture and you can choose to run Weave8 without any modules as a pure vector database or you can choose to enable one or more of the available uh, or your custom models. So a module in Weave8 consists of two parts. The first if, is the module itself in Weave8. This is written in Go and it connects with Weave8's um, internal lifecycle. It's uh, so you can influence the business logic and uh, yeah, the GraphQL API, for example. And yeah, we, for example, saw this previously in the uh, named entity recognition uh, module over here. So we have this new piece in GraphQL. Um, and this is written in v itself. So if we go there, we are in uh, the GitHub of v and we have different uh, modules running here. And then, the second part is the inference service. So this is usually a containerized application which runs the machine learning model uh, or the inference model itself. And this can be in any, any language. In this case, um, we have an example of like the BERT, uh, tra BERT transformer model in Python. Um, yeah, and then you can write in API API wrapper around it to uh, and serve this as a uh, yeah client to use by the machine learning model in VV8. So for example, this one has uh, the hugging face transformer model. Um, uh, and then the second part of the model is the inference service. And this is usually a containerized uh, application which runs the machine learning model uh, or inference, uh, yeah, separate from V8. And this can mean any any language as long as is as long as as it serves a few API endpoints that V8 can consume. In the named entity recognition example, 
um, we have a hugging face transformer model below it. So yeah, I just took, um, for example, the first model um, uh, to do the named entity recognition. And I wrote a small API uh, script around it to make this a service. So this looks, for example, like this is a really small, the API endpoint, there are four API endpoints. So um, to let Weaviate know if the, the application or the container is uh, live and ready, a meta in endpoint and the actual inference service, which uses the um, yeah, pre-trained model by, um, yeah, that is available in Hugging Face. Uh, this is the existing um, module landscape uh, by the time of recording this. As you can see, we have um, yeah, two different text factorization modules available, but within these modules, you can choose like any type of transformer module, for example. Um, we have one image factorization module uh, right now, which is ResNet50, but you can again connect other modules if you want. We have a question answering module, a named entity recognition module, as I uh, showed. We also have a spelling checker module. Um, and then you can, of course, choose you to make your own uh, custom module and um, yeah, use VVA to scale that. Uh, and as I said before, you can also choose to uh, not run any module and use VVA as a pure vector storage and search engine. Now, it's possible to make your own models. Uh, depending on what kind of module you want to make, you can write only an inference service, so only the second part. Um, for example, when you use, want to use your own vectorizer, or you can also write a VV8 module itself. Then you are completely free to choose the GraphQL design and, uh, and so on. Um, but it means you have to write a bit in Go. And actually, it does, it's not that hard. I just uh, wrote this myself and made a pull request earlier this month of my first uh, code in Go. And I've, I've documented this all uh, on the documentation on the website. So uh, don't be discouraged by the language. <laughs> and um, yeah, so I wrote this in the named entity recognition model. Um, And also, of course, you can get plenty of help with from our community or from us um, through our Slack channel, uh, for example. I will give you the link later in the presentation again. Now, there's a few things to say about open source. Uh, we is completely open source and always will remain open source. We have a great community. There's a lot of people um, using we already in production. Um, and also, we see that people connect their own machine learning models. So that's really great. And we have a very active Slack channel, which you can join um, to learn more about Weaviate and to connect with people who already use it. You can join it by scanning the QR code. Um, yeah, which it, the Slack channel is very active where people ask uh, questions and help each other. And we as makers of Weaviate uh, are also always very active on Slack as well to ask your questions and also receive feedback um, yeah, of the yeah, of the piece of software. And what is really cool is that we are still very busy developing Weave 8 And this means that you as a community uh, have actually a great say in um, yeah, uh, how it develops. So you can give feedback, uh, you can make issues with new ideas, um, you can connect your own custom modules, which we of course will be glad to learn about, uh, et cetera. And of course, you're always welcome to contribute on the source code uh, even on GitHub. And finally, I want to give you some ideas how to get started with VV8. So on the website, um, we have a great introduction page with uh, a video which will help you get started. And um, you can use like, uh, quick start, which is a yeah, 10 minute tour of VV8 uh, in which you can actually run a demo model yourself. We have this installation page with a uh, yeah, VV8 configurator. So if you want to start using VV8, you can use this 
um, yeah, small application to customize and generate a Docker Compose uh, configuration file. So that's really great. Um, we have a lot of videos on our YouTube channel, so which is um, semi. We have a lot of uh, tutorials as well on the website, but also um, we make Google Collabs. So this is actually um, a community member who made a Google Collab with uh, WeV8. We have uh, four client libraries in Python, JavaScript, Go, and Java, and they support all the, the existing API endpoints and even more. Uh, so that's really um, yeah, easy to get started if you're familiar in Python, for example, um, because you don't need anything else. And then lastly, um, yeah, the Slack channel. So we are active on that. We announce new versions, um, but you can also get help there, of course. So to recap, um, WeV8 is a vector database and vector search engine. Uh, with WeV8, you can do the following tasks. So you can search through your data, you can uh, discover answers to specific questions. You can automatically classify new data coming from any other data source. And you can predict or recommend yeah, graph relations in your data. Um, and of course, you can extend all these capabilities uh, with more machine learning models. And WeV8 can be applied in any uh, industry, actually, because it's uh, yeah, it's industry agnostic. You can choose your own machine learning model, um, yeah, to run it. So yeah, we know people that use WeV8 in yeah, basically all of these use cases that are meant here. Of course, it's not limited to that. Okay, this was my presentation. Uh, I hope you liked it, and I hope you learned a lot about the open source vector search engine WeV8. So if you have questions, I'll be happy to answer them in the Q&A after this session, or otherwise you can always send me an email or yeah, join our Slack channel for uh, more communication. Okay, enjoy the rest of the Open Source Summit. Bye-bye.